Welcome to 20% Time, a podcast that takes you behind the scenes of Titan, a web consultancy based out of Chicago, but entirely remote and spread out all over the place. We specialize in Laravel, a PHP framework, but we're often pairing that with any number of JavaScript frameworks and libraries. I'm your host, Dave Hicking, and this week I'm joined by Kristen Collins, a lead programmer here at Titan. Hi, Kristen. How are you? Hi, Dave. I'm doing well. How are you? I'm excellent. It is a, a chilly Friday morning here mm-hmm. in the Northeast, and I am super excited to have you on once again. Uh, as a repeat uh, podcast guest, I appreciate it. Kristen, for folks who haven't heard you on a podcast before or haven't uh, interacted with you online in any way, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. So as you said, my name is Kristen. I work at Titan as a lead programmer. Um, I've been doing Laravel and PHP for a number of years now. Um, my favorite thing to do is to work on projects from scratch and kind of build ideas up from nothing, basically. <laughs> Um, I like throwing that together and collaborating with people. It's my favorite thing to do. That's fantastic. I love doing that too. <laughs> so uh, today we've got you on to t- not talk about uh, building a project from scratch or anything to do with Laravel, but kind of something to do with not just Laravel, but really being a programmer. And that's, or honestly, if you want to extend it even more, just being a professional out there in the world. And that's yeah. conference talks, all about them. Um, why people should do them, maybe a little bit about how to prep for a talk. I don't know if we're, if we're going to go there or not, but let's start by talking about your experience with conference talks, if that's okay. What was, absolutely? what was your first conference talk and why did you want to do it? My first ever conference talk was yeah. actually a little sort of mini conference. My workplace several years ago had what they called um, Innovation Week. Ooh. And so it was a rather big company yeah. and we would all get together and come up with neat ideas for the company. And it was a really great idea. Um, Titan does a similar thing, which is 20% time. So we're doing it every Friday, not once a week, <laughs> um, but it's the same idea. Yeah. And basically you give people freedom to kind of come up with new and innovative ideas that can benefit, you know, themselves creatively as well as the company. And when I worked there, it was the first year that um, they opened it up beyond just the software developers. Um, they included us in web, they included marketing, they included everyone. And um, my boss at the time, and his name was Justin, very great boss and everything, just, you know, kind of threw it out there. Hey, let me know if you guys are interested. And I put together something that I thought was very silly, very low key. I did kind of a comical presentation along with it just to keep things light and airy. Yeah. And um, it actually went very well. I was, I got follow up from it. I found out a couple of years later that they actually implemented my idea in their software. Mm. And so it was a really rewarding experience for me. And so it, it kind of got me on the track to do it more often. Um, I just did two talks at Laracon, kind of back to back. We did winter 2021 and then summer 2022. Um, And both of those are sort of along the same, a similar vein, I guess, which is, you know, I work for a company that um, they they really stress innovation and being creative. And I put myself out there thinking, oh, this will be silly and (laughs) nobody will care. And um, I got some really positive feedback. So yeah. I really wanted to take the time to sort of, you know, encourage other people to also do things and challenge themselves because it can be a really rewarding experience. What was the biggest lesson you took away from, I guess, prepping and then ultimately first doing that conference talk? That first one, sorry. I think that the biggest thing to take away from it is that we make assumptions about ourselves and our own intelligence. I think sometimes that um, what we have to offer is smaller than what other people have to offer mm. or even um, not valid in some way or people will see it and think less of you because you have that point of view. And I think what I've sort of taken away from all my experiences is that that really isn't the case. Um, we're all individuals. We all think differently. And having multiple points of view, having multiple streams of input is how we learn and grow in our development community. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, and honestly, that's just, it's more, that's more than just being a developer, right? You know, I think we all, I mean, honestly, like the first time I ever did a podcast, I'm sure the first time you ever saw yourself on a video or heard yourself on a podcast, you were just like, oh my God, 
we all yes. sort of we have that tendency to react in that way but like no you can it's so it's kind of it is okay to put yourself out there and understanding that everybody comes into it with that kind of trepidation at first right i think so i think it's a common viewpoint for a lot of people who actually give these conference talks yeah. that you know r- right up until they give it they're worried that what they have to say either doesn't have value or someone's immediately going to come in and correct them after the fact. And the truth is that those, those fears are just fears that sometimes keep us from doing things that we're scared to do. But in actuality, you know, things like Stack Overflow would never have been invented if people didn't want to ask questions or, you know, our community involvement with forums and social media, it's all a result of people wanting to collaborate with other people and ideas. And also it's this, it's, you know, it goes along with honestly doing work on open source projects. It's the, it's becoming yep. comfortable with working in public, which is a whole, or showing your work or sort of re- not being quite as guarded in public, which can be hard for lots of people. And even if you've done it, it can still be difficult. Do you, do you find that like, even, you know, even though you've done multiple conference talks, do you feel kind of jitters when you are about to go and do one? Oh, a hundred percent. Every time. Yeah. Every time. Yeah. Um, yes. I have been told that sometimes I make it look easy and that is just facade, I tell <laughs> you, because it is an intimidating experience. And, yeah. you know, I think that I think that I do have more confidence the more I do it, which is why I think people should try to do it more often is because, you know, the more you do something, the less scary it becomes. But I think that we are all still challenging ourselves every time and putting ourselves out there in public. Yeah. I was going to ask you uh, uh, along those lines. So you, you just mentioned confidence, but so let's say someone's listening and they're like, okay, we all love going to conferences. Well, not, you know, many of us love going to conferences, whether virtual or in person, but actually speaking at a conference might be a whole different thing. Right. Uh, Especially if Mm -hmm. they think that maybe I haven't done this for long enough, or I'm not an expert. So you mentioned confidence. Are there other like reasons why people should really think, yeah, actually speaking at a conference would be beneficial for me or beneficial for my career? Oh, yeah, I can think of a lot of reasons. Um, So networking is probably at the forefront of that. Um, When you attend conferences, I've noticed that even active participation where you're asking questions in the audience, Mm. um, you can meet a lot of great people that way by also putting yourself out there and saying, hey, I don't know an answer to a question and I'm willing to ask it in front of a group of 100 people or more. Um, You know, people are more willing to talk to you after you've sort of been a little bit vulnerable with them, I think. Mm. And um, once I gave um, my first Laravel talk on the Nova SEO packages, I didn't get a lot of feedback at first, but I have noticed people forking or starring my package that I shared in sort of a collaborative effort. Yeah. And I think that, you know, by putting myself out there and by saying, hey, here's some code, I invited people in to continue that conversation with me offline. Yeah, that's interesting. I hadn't really thought about um, the sort of asynchronous nature uh, that, you know, maybe software specifically, but at least in this case, software particularly offers in terms of feedback for for conference um, organizers, you know, because... One thing I, I always get a kick out of, and this is a, a interesting, I don't know, perk thing about working at Titan. So uh, we go to Lara- every time there's an in-person Laracon, we go, we, we are a sponsor, we have a sponsor table. Um, because I am not a dev, I end up working the sponsor table because as much <laughs> as I love all of my colleagues and I love the community, many of the talks are going to skim right over my head. Um, <laughs> and what I always love is anytime we have a first time speaker at Titan or maybe someone who hasn't spoken a long time or honestly, anybody who speaks afterwards there are people who kind of will come by the table and they'll be like hey is uh have you seen Kristen? can uh, <laughs> i have a question you know and um and sometimes it's you know uh i don't know it's it's always i'm always excited by the idea that um like we're helping to kind of share knowledge throughout the community but also that like you know if someone you know sees someone on stage they're like oh I'm kind of like that person, whether I'm like, oh, they seem I've met them before and they seem kind of shy, but they're up there. So maybe I can ask them a question like you're you're making those connections in other sorts of different ways. I love that. I think that's a great like, I don't know. I love that. We I love that we encourage conference talks. I think that's why we're kind of doing this podcast, right, is to talk is to talk about it a little. Um, 
Yeah. And encourage more people to do it because, you know, you definitely, again, don't, you don't want to get in sort of what's I think commonly referred to as an echo chamber in development oh, where, yeah. you know, you, you, you want those new ideas. For That's sure. what's burns on creativity. It's a spurns on development. You know, we are not going to find new developers or work with new packages if we never see them, you know, and there's always, I think, this inclination when you're getting started or you're starting something for the first time that you want to keep it private to yourself because mm. oh, you're yeah. worried about the criticism and the backlash. And or looking I'm not going to say... Yeah. And I'm not going to say it's not there, Dave, because that would just be a lie. Sure. But the honesty is that I've noticed that it's a very small percentage of the community that we experience. And when you do put yourself out there like that, you're going to meet more and more people who want to help and want to, you know, contribute to your ideas and also give you their ideas. Um, it's a great way to learn and grow. I love the I love the point about not having an echo chamber. I think that's so incredibly important um, because, you know, this, I'm not even talking about Laracon. I'm saying just like more broadly in tech, you know, you sometimes see conferences where over the years, it's the same three people, four people show up. And that's in some cases, that's because, no, these people are doing like awesome things continually and they have new things to announce. And that's, that's great. But it's also great to have fresh faces, new people, new ideas, new perspectives. Um, yeah. I think that's a really good point. Okay, so let's say somebody is listening to this right now and they're like, all right, Kristen, I'm, I'm starting to, to feel some, some confidence. I'm, I'm on board with the idea, but maybe speaking at Laracon seems daunting or maybe that seems like a big, a big bite to take for your first time out. Where would you, do you have advice on where someone could, on how you think someone should start? Oh, absolutely. Um, I think the best place, honestly, to start is some form of a, meetup group mm. or sub community. Yeah. Um, I, there's, I mean, I know meetup is hard to pitch right now because it's <laughs> during COVID. So we're not meeting up. Yeah. Um, but you know, when I first moved to Maryland, I was actively involved in the women who code down in DC and would go pretty much once a month to collaborate on topics. Um, right now I'm in the Lara Bells community with Zuzana. Yeah. And we talk about conference talks there pretty regularly and people will give you the space to pitch. Obviously, working at Titan, everybody helps to review my talks before I go out <laughs> and give some feedback, which only makes it better and stronger. But yeah, I think just getting involved in, you know, a community yeah. would be super helpful to just kind of practice and, you know, get some topics underway. Um, it's really a good place to start. Yeah. Um, if I can add on to that, I think another place, you know, so Titan has, we, we, we call them Titan talks. They are internal talks for our team on 20% days, but I've been at companies, especially ones that are, are maybe a bit more traditional. Maybe you're in person. We called them lunch and learns, right? We're like, oh, yeah. You, yeah, I think like even starting there, right. Getting like sort of being okay, talking out loud with folks, maybe some folks who aren't on your team, maybe some different folks might come. Um, yeah, I think that's also I think that's if you know, if you're in a bit more of a traditional company, that might also be an idea. Yeah. And for people who maybe are scared of doing the presentation and the content all at once, mm. you know, blog posts are a very big medium right now. Um, you can obviously, if you're a web developer listening to this, you can just spin up your own. Yeah. Um, but there are also a lot of examples of people who will take your work. Um, I know that. Laravel News in particular is very open about publishing packages, right? So if yeah. you wanted to do a small write-up on your package, I'm sure you could submit that over. Um, you know, obviously there's more than that out right. there in the world. I'm not, I only publish uh, my blog posts through Titan and I'm still <laughs> under the review process. So I unfortunately cannot give much direction as far as that's concerned. But, you know, if, if you do, if you want to take it one step at a time and say, okay, I want to do my content first, and yeah. then I can kind of put that together. That's a great way to start. If we haven't even talked about, especially now, you know, you could live stream if you really wanted to go big and bold, but you know, you don't have to start there. Um, so <laughs> let's say, all right, someone has signed up for their first conference talk, but they, they are, maybe they know a little bit where to start, but they would love some advice. Do you have any advice that you could give somebody who's about to give their first talk? 
Yeah, absolutely. Um, as far as like finding a topic or, you know, kind of narrowing down on an idea, yeah. I definitely encourage people to sort of examine their niche. Um, mm -hmm. If you look for feedback in your own team, or even sometimes review some of your old projects. I think that a lot of people find that there's work that they've done that has been praised for a very specific reason, right? Whether yeah. it's, oh, this has a great user interface. Like I would use this, I wish this was available on all my applications right. or, oh, you know, I think we are just watching the, uh, the Laravel documentary and the, um, was it Taylor's code comments, yeah. right? The scaffolding structure. There are little niches about the way that everybody works or the type of work that they do um, that can shed an interesting perspective. Um, I think another thing to remember is that it's okay to not have a full clear picture when you submit a talk because mm. it, I think being broad, even with your topic selection can help steer you once you start deep diving into it, right? Most of my talk titles that have been submitted, they're not 100% precise as to what I actually delivered that day, you know? Yeah. So it sounds like you don't put the the topic on a pedestal. You're not like kind of, you're not thinking it's got to be perfect. It's got to be precisely new, like sort of crafted you're comfortable sort of with something a bit bigger and then honing in as you get, as you get closer to it. That's interesting. Absolutely. And I think that that is a very important process of writing in general is being open to editing in a lot of manners. You know, there's going to be new technologies that come out all the time, right? Yeah. Your team's probably going to tell you things like, oh, I know that you use this particular package a lot, but people might not be familiar with it to so spend more time, you know? And I think that by setting a broader topic, you are giving yourself room to grow into the areas that are most beneficial. So, so far we have talked mostly about what potential first-time speakers could do, but I want to, I want to flip this around. <laughs> what, what do you think, do, or do you have opinions on what conference organizers can or should do to encourage more first-time conference speakers? Wow, that's a great question. Um, so uh, I'm going to throw people under the bus. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the things that we've talked about locally is that a lot of people um, post uh, call for speakers on social media or Twitter. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, that gets lost mm. in kind of a deluge of other notifications. Um, other times there's a small population of the world that, um, like myself, that doesn't use Twitter very right. often or every day. Um, and also I think that, again, with the echo chambers, sometimes we share with the people that we know, right. but doing a broader outreach or casting a wider net, so to speak, uh, can be a really good idea. Um, I've seen some conferences that have a dedicated page for the upcoming year or upcoming talk well before they're actually putting it together that just has a call for speaker applications. Yeah. So they know that people who are interested in the conference can go ahead and submit things as they want to, and it doesn't need to be a full dedicated site for, you know, you don't have to plan out all the events yet. You can just say, hey, we're calling for speakers. Um, and I, I think personally, that's an excellent tool. I think that's a really good point about uh, you know, social media and not, first of all, you can't assume everyone's on there, but also I think we all sometimes forget that because not just Twitter, but whatever social media you're on is ultimately like decided by a combination of ch people you've decided to follow plus whatever the algorithm might be showing you that day, like your Twitter is not the same as my Twitter, right? you know? And so people you're like, oh, well, I shared it with all these folks. And it's like, yeah, but like, that's such a small niche at this point. You know, we don't have a shared, there's no such thing as like a universal t timeline for Twitter. That would be impossible, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I, I think that's a, I think that's a, I think that's a really good one. Uh, so in term, keeping on the, the trend of maybe what conference organizers could do more of or do better at, you've now, you know, you've spoken uh, at a couple of them. Are, I mean, we don't need to throw, well, we're not trying to throw Laracon on the bus. We love Laracon. We sponsor them. But just in general, and this can be for first time speakers, this could be for all speakers. Are there things that you would love to see that would make the experience of speaking at a conference better or maybe more comfortable or whatever uh, term you want to put in there? I'd say that with my previous experience, first yeah. of all, that there are pretty tight deadlines given for talks, mm. but that doesn't 
actually translate into the day itself. As we all know, talks go under over sure. more, way more than they go under. And as much as people would like to plan for that, um, I think the truth is that maybe trying to hone in on, I think maybe setting a more fluid limit or um, even trying to check in with people the week before and saying, hey, did you time your last talk? Would you come right. in at? Um, might help to kind of define that schedule a little bit better and not make people feel rushed or pressured or because <laughs> yeah, sure. I know some people really stress, you know, if they run over and then a break is canceled and then mm. you see a bunch of people that are upset about it and then you sort of feel responsible like, oh, did I cut someone's lunch short? I feel terrible. Um, so I think that might make people feel a little bit more comfortable as yeah. far as schedules. But I'm not sure that there's a real perfect answer for that because, yeah. you know, you're organizing a lot of people oh, across sure. a lot of different time zones. And that in and of itself is quite a major feat. Oh, there's a reason why we don't have TitanCon. You know, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a lot of work and I appreciate the folks who do it. I really do. Um, Absolutely. Is there anything, uh, that's, so that's actually, that's the end of my, my questions. Is there anything about giving a conference talk or prepping for a conference talk or, or anything like that, that I didn't ask you about that you would like to talk about? Anything else in your mind? Anything else you want to share? I think that a couple of questions that I've been asked overall yeah. um, is how do you even pitch a conference talk, mm, right? Okay. I have yeah. this open-ended Google form and what do I say? How much do I say? Should yeah. I be, you know, should I be pre-thinking my entire talk ahead of time? Um, and I would say that, uh, just to reiterate, it's okay for your talk title to be a little broad or vague, um, especially Laracon, but I know other conferences, they don't lock you into the first title you submit. You can refine it after the fact if you find something that's a little more fitting. Um, it's okay to give yourself a little room where that's concerned. As far as talk descriptions, I think that a lot of conference organizers are looking for something that they can copy and paste directly under you know, your speaker info or what they'll be talking about. So you really want this to kind of be a sales pitch, right? You mm. want to approach it, I'd say one to three sentences most times, unless they ask you for a long description. Um, I'd keep it to one to three sentences. Um, and you want to answer two things, right? One, what is the problem you want to solve? And two, why would people want to hear your talk? Um, and I think that just a quick address of those things really helps the organizers to judge, okay, what audience are they hitting at here and what topics will they cover? That'll help them create, you know, tags or invite certain people say, hey, this is kind of your community. Maybe you want to hear this out. Um, I think another thing to remember is that you can buddy up with people. Um, mm. You see a lot of conference speakers doing solo uh, talks because yeah. I think that there's some people who can stand in front of others and I think there's some people who can't right. and I think it's important to remember that that's okay you know a lot of our work as developers is collaborative right we do use a lot of open source products we do you know have teams of people that we work with um, it's okay to also have teams of people that help you on your talk and mm. if one person wants to deliver that and just sort of share credit you know don't be scared of that don't be scared of contributing just because you don't want to talk you don't want to be the one talking to people that's a great point yeah this is all uh this is all really great Kristen. because i uh the only well, yeah the last couple times i have tried i have submitted a talk i have not been accepted and that is totally okay and i think one thing i just realized listening to you is i think i'm writing too much i'm writing like a <laughs> short novel basically about why my talk is would be awesome so that uh that is that is really uh useful and actionable even just for me, if no one else. So thank you, Kristen. Um, yeah. And is there anything else uh, before we end up to, before we wrap up today, is there anything else that you wanted to share about this topic? I think the big thing that I hope that everyone takes away from this is that we are a diverse community of people mm. um, in life, in work. Yeah. And we are more diverse than sometimes who is actually saying it or giving the talk. Right. But I do think it's important to remember that you can inspire other people by getting up there and talking. You know, you want yeah. them to see that there are a lot of different people who code. There are, 
probably as many different types of people as there are IDEs at this <laughs> point to configure your environment, you know, just like your local setup, you know, nobody's the same. We all do it differently. And I think it's good to represent that in our community and to show that we are diverse. We have great talent and we have a lot to share. That's fantastic, Kristen. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this has been a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Um, I know you said you're not super active on Twitter, at least if people want to connect with you or find you online at any place, is there any specific way, place they should go to? Well, I did join the Larabelle's Discord and I am actively trying to be more um, <laughs> involved in that. Excellent. And I know at least the general channels are open to everyone. So, you know, don't feel excluded. Come hang out. I think also my GitHub is constantly monitored. It's not really a social media platform, but if you yeah. want to tag me on a package that you want to look over or collaborate on an idea, I'm definitely watching that all the time. Excellent. Well, Kristen, thank you so much. It's been wonderful having you on. And uh, yeah, I'll see you around Titan. All right. Thanks, Dave. Bye.